guess it's going live. Ooh, and we're live. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Stuck in It Zombies. I'm Amy, also known as Jay Nitma. Sorry, and I'm choking. <laughs> uh, and I'm Megan, also known as Just Run It. And this is episode 394, February Tips and Tricks. So yeah, no, I did that the other day too. And I thought like I was, I, and water was away from my desk, right? So like, I'm trying to like mute myself and turn my camera off and go get my, uh, my little iron flask and like drink, drink something. Cause I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah no, it was right when I went to speak, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, but, um, yeah, there's a lot of um, exciting things going on. Uh, yeah. I've been participating in the February uh, challenge on Instagram. So I've been enjoying that. Yes. Uh, I've actually kept up with it to today, but no promises for it. the rest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think it's because the prompts, I just kind of gave up with trying to do what I want to do. Um, I think for the whip tally, I ended up writing on a post-it note and then posting that. And I'm like, oh, I really wanted to do like a reel where I showed you everything. And I was like, nope, ran out of time. Mm -hmm. Post it, picture done. <laughs> we're mm -hmm. we're going to go with the backup plan. <laughs> so I think, um, I think giving myself the freedom to not worry about, um, you know, oh, I thought a really great idea and this is what I would like to execute down to this is what I can execute. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sometimes that's, yeah, that's liberating, right? Sometimes we get caught in the, like, we have to do what we thought we were going to do or what, you know, would be best, right? Mm -hmm. And um, just being like, no, this is what I'm able to do, right? Um, liberating and you did it. Yeah. I was listening to a podcast because I've been listening to more of not self-improvement, but, you know, strategy and um, how to make better decisions and things like that. And it reminds me of the maximizer versus satisfizer um, yeah. type thing. Like if some people want to to take in all of the information and then sometimes you get overwhelmed and some people are like, nope, this first option is good enough, you know, and they move on. So the satisfizer just takes that first few options, you know, and just goes, okay, I'll take this one. It's good enough. And then the maximizer is the what if, you know, I got to see every possibility and then um, bring it down to a decision. And then what would be like the, uh, I guess the iterator, <laughs> Like you, you do the satisfizer and then you iterate on it to maximize, right? Like as you learn more from kind of your small bets, right? Or I guess that's more of kind of a growth mindset, I guess. But anyway, we're, we're yeah. geeking out about. Um, yeah, but it's a tip or trick, right? Um, it is. They do say that we're satisfizers those in end, early. Up, yeah. end up being more happy with their choices mm -hmm. um, because they haven't, you know, exhausted everything. And they don't have this, what if there's another option and they want to keep researching, they seem to be happier with their choices because they've taken the best immediate option. Mm -hmm. And um, the maximizer looks at that and goes, you could have saved a thousand dollars if you had spent two more weeks researching it, you know, like yeah. it's, it's, um, and they're like, so <laughs> the choice worked for them. And, yeah. uh, and sometimes when you're paralyzed, having somebody else narrow the options is a good help. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But, but yeah, what would well, the iterator be? Maybe the iterator is that was good enough for now. And then, but you, then you maximize, then you learn more and you, yeah, you get it back, you get it back in. I'm trying on that. I think I'm more of the research and, you know, I, I don't know, not perfectionist, but right. Like let's get it right. Right. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah, the small bets and and uh, kind of iterating on them definitely, I think is a is a better. I mean, you get a sense of inertia and you get a sense of whether or not you've spent a lot of time on something that isn't going to be um, quite right. It kind of reminds me of um, of Zandi's uh, presentation at ZK, mm -hmm. right? All of the um, 
iterations he goes through to get to a, um, to, to a design. Uh, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So, and again, my favorite tip was the, the taping on a sweatshirt or something like yeah. you just take a, a clothing that drapes the way that you think that your knitted garment is going to drape. And then you tape your, your modifications or adjustments that you think you want to make, you know, whether that's like, you know, faking a little cable or, yeah. You just kind of look back at the bigger picture and go, oh, yes, the placement over here looks nice rather than knitting the whole thing and going, oh, that doesn't look nice. Yeah. <laughs> so that would be a maximizer, satisfizer, iterator yeah, right. situation um, as well. But anyway, we do have great speakers here. I'll segue. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so a little bit of administrati. Super excited to talk to uh, Sophia. Uh, this this weekend, um, drunk knitter. Uh, she has book, which is you know kind of in our um, year long challenges of the craft your own book venture, uh, mm -hmm. as well as a podcast. And um, yeah, super excited to chat with her tomorrow. So hopefully, um, if you're able to join us live, you can if you're a ZKN member. And um, yeah, that's that's exciting. I'm hoping to get some more authors and maybe. Um, other, I'll just leave, I'll just leave that cliffhanger there, other kind of angles into our craft your own book venture okay. um, lined up and announced here shortly. So awesome. Yeah. Uh, I'm really excited for tomorrow and I, I hope people understand that like we have these great uh, speakers that come in and talk to our knitting network and mm -hmm. yeah, we'd like to see more faces. Absolutely. It's a great opportunity to not only kind of expand your world, perhaps, you know, or go, go in deeper into um, the, the worlds that we're bringing to your doorstep, but also just kind of some um, camaraderie and um, yeah, chatting with, with folks. Right. So yeah, great, great. Um, and then, yeah, just to call out to our self-striping um, craft along, our craft your own book venture craft along. Um, those are definitely keeping me, um, the, the dashboards are keeping me excited with yes. the little check marks and um, as well as the ZK craft along. So I feel like I'm trying every, I'm looking at all of the different, like, is that game theory? All of the different angles with which I could <laughs> maximize. It's all of the challenges and, um, and it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Right now I'm down to one project, which kind of leads into my tipper trick. So, okay, you know. go for it. So I have, and I don't want to say I have one project. You saw my whips. If you're following me on Instagram, I have a bazillion of them. Um, it just, I'm down to one thing that I need to get done before the end of February. So oh. I'm. I am um, monogamous on it, right? So if I'm, yeah, I know, right? Uh, however, uh, it is a lot of moss stitch. It's not mm. fun. And I mean, it's fine, but it's not uh, exciting. Um, so I decided to cast on a very potato chippy um, palette cleanser that I could work on when I was getting tired and frustrated with my current whip. Um, I know that I could like grab my socks or whatever, but then I might tend to go beyond, you know, mm -hmm. I might not stop at the, the certain stopping point and get back to the project I need to finish. Potato chips are by definition, very hard to put down. <laughs> Understand, but there's, you know, one of them, right? It's yeah, not yeah, yeah. So that's your one release valve that you are allowing yourself to yes. go to. Got it. So I have my one release. So my one release, and actually I did put it down mid triangle. Yeah. It Rectang. is my right. um, Tunisian crochet. So I have uh, cast it on and gotten quite a few squares in. And what I'm doing is uh, just picking up that last loop that you pull through is a new color, basically, and then starting mm -hmm. new square. Yep. So uh, in the pattern, the interlocking key by Tony Lipsy, this, these two would be the same color. Yep. And these, these three up here would be the same color. 
it's on the diagonal. I probably yes, have my, it's on the my blanket back here. <laughs> So my modification is when yeah. I get done with the square and mm -hmm. there's a final slip roll, that final one, it, when I pull go the new in, color through, I pull the new color through and then I start my second or my next square. Mm -hmm. It's so fun. So this is DK weight and I've just been pulling from my blanket scraps bag. I have a you know those clear zip bags that come around blankets that you buy in the store? Like a comforter or a, yeah. Yeah, comforter or whatever. I have one of those, so a bigger comforter size one, um, where I put all of my DK or sport, my larger non or super wash, not, so they are definitely super wash. Mm -hmm. Non super wash goes in a different spot. Um, super wash leftovers go in there. So uh, I am pulling from that bag. Right and now, that definitely um, is using different hand muscles too, right? Like yes. Tunisian crochet is like a, like a crochet motion. And then on the return pass, it's like a, bloop, 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 yep. right? Like, yeah. Yeah. It definitely um, gives me a mental break from the, the other knitting I'm doing and also is really fun. Yeah, and for sure. I just, uh, I thought I had another tip in there. Oh, I know what it was. Um, on my blankets, I like to do a sequencing. So we get a semi-solid, a multi, a semi-solid row, a multi-row, and then a semi-solid row. Ah. So that's how I, I did the same thing with my miter blanket. It's got a semi-solid row followed by a variegated, followed by a semi-solid. Even though they're all different colors and it's kind of crazy, um, if you pay attention, it's it's semi-solid, uh, multi-semi-solid as I go through. So, Excellent. I'm a sucker for those multis in Tunisian crochet. I just love mm -hmm. the little bar that sticks up and contrasts mm -hmm. with what you came back with. What size yeah. hook are you using? This one's a six, I believe. Yep, yep six millimeter J. Excellent. Mm, maybe. I'm like, I might need to take my glasses off. <laughs> yeah, it says J. Yeah. And if you wanted to make a similar DK weight one, you could also do like two uh, fingering held double, um, mm -hmm. right? Uh, kind of like one of my squares that I Tunisian crocheted recently. Um, or you could do it in fingering. It would be a lighter weight blanket, right? Um, versus yeah, a dense. Yeah, I'd probably go down the, yeah, because I want, I like the drape of, of the fabric I'm creating. Um, so. Excellent. Yes. And so I much think... fun. Yeah. My yeah. tips and tricks are probably nothing. Um, rocket science. Um, I loved <laughs> yours, Amy. It was a great tip or trick. Um, I was, so I'm making a, um, I'm all in on the marl, obviously, right. I'm wearing my, <laughs> my marled, um, contrast color, uh, Sparky here. And, um, I loved this. I bought this and I think I, I think I, I think I thought, uh, previous Megan thought she was going to make a, a top or something with it. Uh, and I, I look at it now and I'm like, oh, that's going to be a pretty crazy top, right? Some of those pops of whatever could pool. And so I'm was going to, I'm toning it down with holding together some, um, cashmere's, um, uh, cashmere silk mohair. And uh, and just loving the way that the marl is turning out. I posted it this week, so just lots of of just really. I mean, it mellows out the like craziness of the um, of the variegated when you mix it with that that semi solid, and then it's cut. It's creating the the correct weight, right? So. Um, in addition to doing some cool things with color, it's also creating, so this was written for a DK or a worsted weight. Um, it is my tucking in cowl that I knit for, or I created, or designed for uh, knit crate. And it's, so it's worked on the bias from, from this side to the side, and then you end up um, seaming together and creating the cowl with the point. 
Um, so yeah, just super loving in addition to the colors, all of the textures, right? So there's a brioche collar here that you can either have stand up or you can tuck it in, mm -hmm. um, thus the name tucking in. And um, then there's a, a uh, there's some cables and my, the garter in the middle is what expands. Uh, the, the tip that I was going to mention, in addition to kind of creating your own yarn and your own colorway by marling, is the, um, I've made two of these. I made one for my mom and I made the design sample, obviously. And I noticed when I was blocking it that I had to like kind of scrunch in the guard. So I'm on the garter here, the garter edging that keeps it from rolling. I mean, obviously the garter that's in the middle would um would not roll but then you know the point here would roll and then the edge um a little bit up here was you know so it's got a garter edge on it actually here is 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 the main place where I didn't want it to roll but um the because garter is such a square stitch right like in general the the stitch gauge and the row gauge is square, right? Um, if you've ever knit a Shana Lines design, <laughs> card or anything, you, you've you learned that. Um, it ends up being kind of floppy on the edge and, and I was kind of zhuzhing it in rather than having it expand out because I'd used the same needle for that garter. Um, mm -hmm. So here on this one, which um, I probably won't modify the pattern, but I could add a little note that if you're getting kind of some floppy edging here, um, I went down to instead of an eighth, I believe it's a six or a five. Um, mm -hmm. And that's really kind of cinching. I mean, it's not making it, you know, suck in, but it's it's making it's the garter cinch in a little bit more and have a tidier edge when I block it here um, with the cable and the um, and the garter. And then I need to, and then I'll need to uh, zip zip. Um, well, first I'll block it, which is another tip and trick, right? Like if you want this to be blocked with wides, do that first <laughs> before you seam up the, the edge here, because it's a lot harder once it's in a, um, in a it, it's in a circle, right? It's in the round. Um, when it's flat, I can stretch out this, um, this brioche up at the top and make a really nice little point on the, on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So um, and yeah, just, just really loving that it's, it's giving me a lot of smushy, um, warm mm -hmm. vibes and I can't wait to, I, I'm, I think I'm going to try uh, in addition to, I love color work on zooms because that's the part you can see of me. Um, I, I want to get more into these, like, you know, shoulder covering cowls. Cause then you don't have to knit the rest of the sweater. Just get this pretty thing around your neck. Right. Like I, I should. I should be more into that. I'm telling myself, I'm trying to convince myself. So, mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. No, I, um, I have been thinking a lot about, you know, the things I'm going to knit in March and, mm -hmm. and I have two sweaters because I'm twinning. Um, but, uh, what else I want to include in that month, uh, to, uh, just make it different or make it interesting. And yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. Those cowls that are just kind of a nice shoulder wrap. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm excited. I'm excited. Um, yeah. Again, I think kind of this lighter color lets the, lets some of the, um, which I don't think you're seeing very well with my kind of spotty lighting here, but let's some of the uh, cables and the eyelets around the cables, um, kind of shine a little bit more, I guess, um, rather than having that dominating darker color. So, um, yeah, you just finished a really pretty, um, lighter color cabled, um, uh, texture, texture, tastic sweater I saw on the ZK, um, dashboard. <laughs> oh, dashboard. Yes. Um, I was like, where did I post? That? <laughs> oh, Megan was looking on at the Ravelry. dashboard. <laughs> It's on Ravelry if that's where you want to see the finished object. Yeah, I finally got that off the block and uh, I'd worn it yesterday. I think I overblocked the sleeves because it's garter, right? Mm -hmm. And the sleeves just grow. So I had to like um, fold over my, uh, yeah. <laughs> and it just felt like a lot of extra arm. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. Uh, the next time it gets, gets a bath, uh, I will let it be more uh, form-fitting uh, than when, 
I blocked it pretty aggressively because I wanted it to be looser in the body. Um, but I think, you know, the try on right after it was finished was actually pretty good, but mm. I really wanted to see what it would be like with that ease. And so yeah. we're just going to reblock it and it's going to be a tip or trick to too, right? Yeah. Like you can just really block the heck out of something to see what it looks like with a lot of positive ease and then kind of for lack of a better word, lather, rinse, repeats, right? Yes. <laughs> And then just kind of lay it out and let the stitches do what they want to do rather than like, wool is amazing. I love wool. Yeah, Yeah. it is amazing. Yeah, I would definitely, I can't, I remember what it was like to work with because this is the uh, Sam's uh, sport weight yarn that's kind of a special milled uh, yarn. Uh, It's not just a typical merino. And I remember its behavior. And as long as I rinsed it really good, I think it would just come back together and be yep. real good. So excellent. I'm really excited um, about that one. It is good. But yeah, I was like, how did you see that? <laughs> I'm spying on you, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I worked work yesterday, but I don't remember. <laughs> Awkward I'm, when your co-host yeah. is stalking you. <laughs> Not a big deal. Yeah. I'm okay. Dashboard. You were reviewing the dashboard. Well, I was looking at it. Um, you know, I'm not competitive or anything. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, I, um, I have two more weekends to finish my last textured project. So I'm trying to focus on that. Still can't believe that February has gotten away from us, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah. Monday is already the 20th. I can't believe it. (laughs) And it's a short month, but anyway, thank you for joining us. I see Sandy and Valerie out in the, in the chat. I hope you're having a fabulous Friday and I hope to see you tomorrow. Yep. Bye. Bye, Ufta. All right.